welcome to my channel trim it color today we are going to model a very simple hammer out of polygon inside maya and that will be the beginning of the learning maya for the beginners this basic modeling process can be very helpful for the complex modeling process and for the future development for any kind of polygonal modeling there can be four steps step number one the basic primitive step number two the basic blocking step number three the smoothing step number four the detailing for the basic modeling steps i'm going to create another video in detail but for now we are going to start with a basic primitive and that can be a simple cube here i am assuming that you know the interface of maya we can take the cube from the shelf itself or we can directly go to the create can hit the cube now move the cube towards the y axis and from here you can see the value of it now going to the modules now from animation i have to go to the polygonal module to get the all the polygonal editing tools first of all i want to give cross loops for all the faces and for that i am going to the input of this poly cube and going to all the subdivisions and making it two i'm going to the face component mode to select the individual faces because i want to extrude that particular face go to edit mesh and extrude here i am getting the manipulated tool and this button is the global axis and local axis and in the global axis i am scaling it down a little bit going to the vertex component and selecting all the alternate vertices and scaling it down a little bit to make it a little bit circular because i am going to make a cylinder out of this cube so now again i am going to extrude going to edit mesh hitting the extrude button and again the global axis and extruding it out a little bit now i am getting a cylindrical shape from the cube so here is my custom shelf and inside this shelf i have kept all the commands i use very often so this button is for the extrusion i am hitting that button and again i am extruding a little bit scaling it up and one more time i am going to extrude so hitting the extrude button translating it towards the z axis and this is the shape i was looking for now i am going to the other side selecting two faces and extruding it selecting again the other two faces and extruding it approximately at the same position now going to the side view selecting all the vertices of all the four faces scaling it down to make a single plane and then i'm scaling it down moving it up a little bit towards the x axis and y axis trying to give it a shape like a hammer and scaling it down a little bit more and yeah it's going to work now i am selecting all the four faces and we'll extrude from the side view hit the extrude button pull it to the x axis and trying to get the correct proportion approximately scaling it down a little bit from the y axis and i'm going to work with my local axis this time to get the perfect scaling of the tape and now yeah this is the correct position and now moving to the perspective view going uh, so this is the global axis now i am working with the local axis and i am getting the perfect shape so here i am going to show you how the global axis and the local axis will work so let's see here i am taking a polygonal cube and selecting one face i am trying to extrude it in the z axis so that's giving the perfect result we wanted now if i select both the faces and try to extrude and i am using a local axis now because you can see it's not 
the same of the global axis of the viewport and I'm scaling it down so for both the faces it's work like very same now if I using the global axis and scaling it down the faces are acting actually as one object so there the difference of local and global axis so in this case also I have used the local axis to get the tips properly now I am going to make this area a little bit circular by inserting edge loops so for that I am going to mesh tool and selecting the tool and giving two edge loops and cut faces tool always will work in the camera view here I am selecting the vertices and positioning it a little bit so that the shape will come a little bit circular how it should be here it is and that's looking fine the next thing I'm going to do is a handle of it and for that I'm going to select all the four bottom faces and I think in this area I should scale it down a little bit to get the exact shape of this and this is fine now I'm going to extrude it in the local axis or in the global axis so I'm using global axis scaling it down a little bit that's fine now going to the vertex components I'm selecting all the alternate vertices and scaling it down a little bit here now I'm selecting all the four faces together going to the extrude hitting the extrude button and pushing it in a little bit and working in the global axis again extrude and pulling out the handle and yeah this is the height of this scaling it up in the x-axis a little bit to get the width of it this is fine uh, this area is looking a little bit cubic so I am selecting the alternate vertices and scaling it down a little bit and that's fine now I am planning to make the grip of the handle so for that I am going to give an edge loop so I am going to mesh tool and selecting cut faces tool I am giving a little bit angular cut this is the time to select all the faces of the handle and extrude it out a little bit so I am selecting the Z axis to pull it out so this will be the grip of this handle that's looking fine now let's give a pattern to this handle so going to the front view and I am going to use cut faces tool once again so going to the mesh tool and selecting cut faces tool and giving the loops at a very similar way I'm trying to get the same angle I have created the grip so I'm going to create three rings basically so here I'm giving two two edge loops so this can be approximate and later on I can change the values very quickly from the inputs so here are three patterns now individually I am going to select all the edges and will change the values a little bit here the orientation of all the loops are looking correct now I am going to select the faces of the ring and for that I am selecting everything together and now deselecting the in between faces already selected I am extruding it extruding it in so here the grip is so this was the blocking of the entire hammer with all the possible detailing but if we smooth this model then we'll come to know that some problems are still there and you need to rectify those we can see that this hammer is very smooth and for a hard surface modeling this is not accepted we need to do a little bit adjustment in it so wherever I need a sharp edge 
I need to give double loop and for that I am using insert edge loop tool. So here this is a double loop and we can see how hard this edge is and it's looking perfect for now. I am going to do the same thing for each and every sharp edges. So here is in my shelf there is the insert edge loop tool. I am going to use this tool from there itself now onwards. So for each and every sharp edges I am going to give 2 to edge loop. So now you can see this is looking perfect how I wanted it and for this area also I need to do the same but here if I am using edge loops like this so let's see what's happening so one edge loop second edge loop and if I press 3 in this case these edges are also very sharp what I didn't want that side is looking fine but this side I actually ruined it so I have to take a different option for this so I am going to select all the faces in this area up to the tip of it and I have to select both the sides so selecting all the faces and I am going to extrude it so hit the extrude button and scale it down a little bit in the local axis because I want the modification in each and every faces locally so I'm using local axis. I'll do a little bit adjustment. I can see there the vertices are coming out of the original shape. So I will pull it up and we'll adjust a little bit. So now if I hit 3, this is the shape. I'm getting a very sharp edge both the sides. So this is what I actually needed. So now for the handle, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to give all the double loops, each and every sides. For the grip also, I'm going to do the same thing. Double loops, both the sides. At the bottom also, double loop. Yeah, that's fine. Now, for the grip, what I can do, all these edges, I can take a different modification to make it a little bit perfect so here I have selected all the edge lobes of the grip pattern and going to edit mesh and selecting bevel and in that we can decide the width and the next one is segment now in this case the width I am using approximately 0.6 and that's looking fine and you can see uh, the grips are looking fine how I wanted it and yeah this can be the result of today's session so in this section I am not covering the material and texturing part of it so just follow my next video so hope you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe the channel thank you so much